I cut the check, I cut the check, I cut the check Tell my niggas we up next, so we up next She shot a text, she shot a text, she shot a text Kill the p- I might put the bitch to rest Put a nigga on that same shit I've been ballin' with my niggas, Kevin King Bridge Oh, you drippy, but you better tuck your chin quick What's good, y'all? We back with another episode of Between the Lines. First off, I want to say thank y'all for all the love y'all showed in the last episode. We had 18 views. Um, The only thing I would say is just subscribe. We had 18 views, but we only got one subscriber out of those 18 people. So just subscribe if you're new. But other than that, thank you for viewing. Thank you for watching my episode. I work really hard on this, so to see it kind of pay off. The that past few weeks, I've been getting a lot of views on my videos. So to see... Um, see people starting to come to the channel is something that I really like and I'm happy and I'm excited for so thank you again but um this video is gonna be a little bit short but I just want to talk about players that are gonna be on the trade market that I feel like they should be on the trade market for like contenders to go get um, going into the um, trade deadline which is I want to say March 25th so before I get into that we had a couple news today and it's about two players that were going to be on my list one was about Blake Griffin, and just to get into Blake Griffin, Blake Griffin, two years ago, you guys know I'm a big Blake Griffin fan. Two years ago, Blake had an MVP season, but <clears throat> he didn't really get the votes because you're on the Pistons. You're the AFC, you're not really going to get MVP votes if you're on the AFC, even though if you, you're playing your ass off. And he played it, he played his butt off that year. Um, I want to say he averaged, let me look up his stats real quick. I don't want to make anything up. He averaged um Jesus taking a long time. He averaged 24 points, seven rebounds, and five assists. And he had a lot of really good games, especially that one game against the 76ers when he dropped 50. And I think they won that game. I think he hit like a game tying shot to win the game. So he had a really good season a couple years ago. And then something happened with his hip and I think he separated his hip or something, and then he tried to play in the um, in the playoffs when it was game four. They were getting swept by the Bucks anyway, and he just wanted to play because he felt like he just he's just not that type of person. If he feels like he he can play, he's gonna play. He felt like he could play even with a separated hip, and even messed up his hip even more. So now, fast forward to next the year the year after that. He's barely playing. He only played like 16 games last year. And mind you, this the season got cut in half, so he probably would have played a little bit more. But he only played like 16 games last season, and he looked terrible. And you go into this year, he looks the same. He doesn't like he's going to get better than this. And it sucks because he just came off a career season. And it was a season where he really blossomed. Because for years and years, people look at Blake Griffin as a dunker. And I've always been a person that says he's just not a, he's not just a dunker. He can do literally everything. He can play make, he can score from three levels, and he can play pretty good defense. But playing behind Chris Paul the whole um, Lob City era, that is just what you're going to see. And you even see when games where Chris Paul wasn't playing, where Blake Griffin was just doing everything and was carrying them. But you didn't really see that a lot. But it sucks because now he's hurt. And, well, he's not hurt now, but now he's like, it doesn't look like he's going to get back to those ways. And he's only like 32. So we don't know. He could get back to those ways, but it doesn't look like it. And the bad thing about it is he's making like $35 million. What's a, what's a contract at that time that he deserved? But you're not really playing at the level right now because you just came back from a horrible injury that you tried to play on. Now it affects you in the long run. You just don't have the same balance. You don't have the same speed. You can't really get to your spots that much. And he just looks like a spot-up shooter, to be honest. And they say he hasn't dunked since 2019. For a player that's been known as a dunker to a lot of people, to not dunk since 2019 is crazy. But... It doesn't, it's hard. It's going to be hard for him to get traded because the dude's making 35 million to do not that much, but spot up shoot and sometimes create for his own. But like, like I say, he doesn't have that speed no more. He can't really get to his spots. He doesn't really have that strength anymore. He just looks bad. And it sucks to see because I'm a big Blake Griffin fan. Like I said, that season, he definitely deserves some all star, I mean, some MVP votes because he was carrying that team, the Pistons team. That was terrible. He was carrying them. But. He's not really going to get the looks. And now that he's making $35 million, he's not playing that well. I don't. They just came out with a report that said they're going to sit him out indefinitely until they find a trade for him or if he gets bought out. But like you're buying out a $34 million contract that's going to keep getting better. Like next, next season, he's supposed to be making $39 million. 
So I don't I don't really understand how buyouts work, but like from my knowledge, I really thought it is like whatever's on your contract that is gonna buy the rest of it out. That's a lot of money you're gonna have to buy out from him if I'm right. Cause he I think he has two more years on this contract and it keeps getting better. So next year is 39 and then the year after that I think it's like 41. That's crazy you're gonna be playing paying Blake Griffin 41. And then if you buy it out, it's <laughs> wow. But um I don't understand. I don't know I don't know if he's gonna be able to get traded or even get bought out because that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money that you're taking on. Even if you're a team that's not really rebuilding, but you're a competitive team that you just wanna make the playoff and you feel like Blake Griffin can help you get to the playoffs. That's just adding on 39 million. That's that's kind of wild just to make the playoffs. And I, I don't know. I don't know how he's going to get out of there. I think the only reason, the only way he can get out is to buy him out. But that's a lot of money you're going to be buying out. But the other player that was on the news today was Andre Drummond. And this was so exciting for me because if you guys don't know, I'm a big Cavs fan. My two favorite players that I've been watching since high school, um, Colin Sexton and Darius Garland. They're on the Cavs, so I love the Cavs now. Even though I'm a Lakers fan at heart. Kobe, Lakers fan at heart. But got to like the Cavs now because my guys are on there. And just watching Andre Drummond. Here's the thing about Andre Drummond. I'm just going to bring, give you a little story about Andre Drummond. Coming into his draft was, I think, I wanted to say 2012. He had a pre-draft workout. The reporters asked him, what player do you think your, your game is modeled after? He said Kevin Durant. Andre Drummond has never looked like or played like Kevin Durant in his life. For him to say that, that already sparked, like, that already, like, other, other people, the reporters looked at him like, what? Kevin Durant? Because, like... He's a rebounder. That's basically what he is. A rebounder, a decent pick and roll player that can play make a little bit. He's a rebounder. But for him to say he's Kevin Durant, like wild. And then you you can see like this little IQ things when you watch Andre Drummond play. We have two guards that are trying to learn how to uh, play make. One's already ahead of the other, but like we have two guards that are trying to learn how to play make in the NBA because it's different from younger uh, stages like college and high school. Playmaking play in the NBA is hard. We have two guards that are trying to play me. It is so hard to do that when you have Andre Drummond on your team. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why the teams like the Nets, if they want Andre Drummond. I don't I don't understand why. If they want Andre Drummond, they're going to have to get something in his head. Because he doesn't understand. In his head, he thinks he's the top five center right now. And he'll probably, he'll probably think he's the best center in the league. You even see him trying to get into a little, um, little fuse with... Drum, I mean, what Embiid and other people like, bro, you're just not like that. But in his head, he'll he'll definitely say he's a top five center in the league, which he's not. And the thing with that he does that messes us up so well, so much is he'll ISO for himself. He'll get the ball instead of passing it to, cause they know he's gonna, they know he's gonna try to go up for his own shot. Instead of passing it to the wide open shooter at the three, he'll just go up, try to draw a foul, or just throw up a dumbass shot. And he does that at least ten times a game. It was a game against the um. Who was that against? Nuggets. Four turnovers in a row trying to do the same thing on Jokic. And Jokic himself is not even that great of a defender. But he knew what was coming because he... If you if you watch a game of Andre Drummond, you know what he's going to do for the rest of the square. That's all he does. Turn around, get the ball in the block. Turn around. In and out. Cross over. For some people, it, it, it works on. For some people, it's just like steal or hands up. And he'll just throw up a dumb shot. And like it's so hard to watch. You, if you look at the Cavs, if you look at the Cavs fan base, go to their Instagram page right now. Go on the last game, go on the last picture they posted. Under that post, I promise you, you'll see mad comments saying trade on the drum, please, because everybody sees it. He's hurting us. He's, it, I'm, I don't want to put it all on him because he does do some great things, but he's hurting us a lot. Like if he knew that, bro. That little turnaround shit, you can do it, do it like two times a game. But if it doesn't work, and if it doesn't like a good look, don't force it. And he forces it a lot. If he knew not to do that, he would be a great center. Because one thing I can say about him that he's really good at is defense. He's a really good, smart defender that gets a lot of steals for his size. And he can guard some guards in this league. And he's a really good post defender. I like that about him. He's a de he's a great passer for his size. He's a great passer, a great pick and roll passer for his size. Um. And sometimes he gives effort. Like you, like if he knew, if he had all that, I would love to keep him. I would love to give him a big contract this season, this off season. But he doesn't. His IQ is just not there, and that's why that's why we want to trade him. It was an NBA executive that said, 
Drummond can give you 30 points and 20 rebounds in one game and still will not be affected to the game. And that's true because that 30 points will be on 8 out of 22 shots. That's just a fact. And he'll, he gets his rebound because he's damn near the best rebounder of all time. I'll give him that. Them rebounds is crazy. Best rebounder of all time. But he'll have a stat like that with 8 or 22 from the field. And like 6 free throws. And go 2 out of 6 out of those free throws. It's, it's, it's just like, yo, bro. It's so hard to watch, bro. It's so hard. And like, he'll do that. He'll do a little face up. Try to get an ISO play. Like, we're in the game. Because we, we've actually been pretty competitive this season. And he'll do that shit when we're in the game. When we're And it's a crunch time. And he'll just get, like, four turnovers in a row. Like I said, against the Nuggets. That was in the fourth quarter. Where we were only down by, like, six. And you do that four times in a row? And we lost that game by, like, 12 then. <laughs> and it, it's, it's, like, so easy to blame the whole experience on him. But you can't really blame a lot of it. Some some of it is our coach's fault. Like, our scheme is terrible. Oh, like, and just not telling him, like, yo, you can't keep doing this. Because he does it every time. He does it every time. And the same thing with JaVale. I love JaVale to death. But JaVale be doing some dumb stuff. And he's another person on this list that I think teams should look to trade for. This would be doing some dumb ISO plays for JaVale. And I'm like, JB, you got to talk to these two. Because they the only ones that be doing some dumb ISO plays. And they just not like that. Like, you don't see Larry Nance just get the ball, try to end and out crossover, try to break your ankles. And he's a fucking four. You're a power forward. You don't see him do that because his IQ is there. Drummond and D- McGee, bro, some of their IQ sometimes pissing me off. But um, I don't want to spend most of the video on them. But those, Drummond, Blake Griffin. Um, Drummond can help your team out, any team out, just with defense. If you get in his head that, yo, you, you're just here for defense and rebounds and pick and roll scoring. You're not here to do ISO plays. If you get that in his head, great person for any team. Um, JaVale McGee, the same person. Not really a great rebounder, but a way better defender. And he's been there before. If you wanna if you're like trying to go to the championship, he's been there before. He's won three out of the last four championships since, since basically he just won three out of the last four championships. But yeah. This those two players those three players. Um another person another news that we got today was Frank Nina however you say his last name, Kevin Knox. They both are on a trade trading block for the Knicks. And I feel like Kevin Knox can help a lot of teams. And so can Frank Nilakina. Both of them can go to the Mavericks and shine right now. They can both go to the Mavericks and shine. But Kevin Knox is a great shooter. Like, this past season, I've been realizing, like, he's a great shooter. And he's 6'9 with a long-ass week span. You just get him to the right team, they can unlock that defense potential in him. You got Frank Nilakina, who's already one of the best guard defenders in the league. And you just help him out on his offensive side. That can that can be like a low-risk high reward for any team. You can trade a second-round pick for Frank Nilakina right now. He doesn't really have that much value. Kevin Knox neither. So even if my team, like, I would love Kevin Knox on the Cavs. If we trade him, trade a second-round pick to them, and, like, any bench player we got, I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that because he's a really decent player. Like, he has a shot. Kevin Knox has a shot. And then Frank Nilakini, he can help out a lot of teams. Even some contending teams, you just get in in his head like, bro, we just need you to shoot these threes, play good defense, and then just groom him as a player. Because I can kind of admit, like, the Knicks didn't groom him well. He didn't really have a real role on the Knicks, especially this season where they're trying to win. And he's not at that stage where you can play him in the game and you can rely on him in the game. He's just not at that stage yet. Um, other players that should be looking out for in the trade de- trading block is, well, that you suspect to be traded before the deadline is Otto Porter. Otto Porter is on the last year of his deal, so you don't you don't have to worry about that twenty seven million dollar contract. But just get value, the Bulls to just get value for him, so you just won't lose him for nothing this offseason. A really good player to me. Um, a really good he can play three or four. Can shoot the hell out of the ball, play good defense on your three or your small forward or power forward. So a really good three and D wing for any team. Like the Mavericks, like I said, y'all should go out for these three and D wings. It's on the trade block. The Mavericks, even the Lakers would love him. Clippers would definitely love him. So like stuff like that. Al Horford's been having a really underrated season. He's another player that I expect to get traded, but then again, he does have a huge contract. For Al Horford, even though his value is high, like Al Horford is like that person that has all star value. Like Drummond, all star value. I mean, not Drummond, Draymond Green, all star value. But $28 million behind that all star value, uh, I think the only people that want to pay that is the Warriors. Hey, uh, what's his name? 
Horford, all star value. But like, I think he has twenty eight million dollar contract too, even thirty, I guess. But yeah, like, I don't know if the team's willing to trade for that thirty million dollar contract. But like, the value is there. Like, you see what he's doing with this this Thunder team. Everybody going into this year, like, the Thunder gonna suck. They got nobody. But like. Yo, they're actually pretty good. They just beat the Bucks yesterday, and they weren't even healthy. They, they didn't even have Shea. And the Bucks are fully healthy. And they just beat the Bucks. Like, Al Horford is a great player. Can spread the floor, can play really good defense. Even though he's getting old, he's still playing really good defense. And it, it was even time when he was ISOing Giannis yesterday. I was like, God damn, you just going to go after him like that? But a lot of teams should be looking for Al Horford. Al Horford, if they can find a way to get Al Horford back in... Uh, on a, in the Celtics jersey, that will help them out a lot because they need that paint presence. Um, any other team, Lakers? Nah, probably not. Nah, nah. The the Raptors, they need a center. They was talking about training for Andre Drummond. They they can use the Al Horford. But um, another person on his team that can be a really good trade piece, George Hill. George Hill, compared to Eric Bledsoe last season, George Hill had a better season. He came off the bench. And he played way more than Eric Blossom when it came to the playoffs because he was just better. Can shoot, bro, it's just a reliable shooter. It was for basically the whole season until the season got canceled. George Hill was leading the league in threes, three-point percentage. And he just had a really good season last year and, and can help any team. Right now, the Clippers, y'all better go get George Hill. Clippers better go get George Hill. I'm telling you, they better go get George Hill. Another player, Michael Scala, a great big man. Well, he's not really big. He's like 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, but power forward that can come off the bench to shoot the ball, play decent defense, a good leader for a team, too. Michael Scala can help out a lot of teams. Even though I just kind of shit on his name, Eric Blusso, I don't know what his value is, to be honest. I don't really know what he's good at <laughs> other than defense, to be honest. But... The most on and off player I ever seen in my life, bro. <laughs> he will have a game, he'll have a couple games, 24 points, 28 points, 66, 7 assists. Then the next few games, 4, 7, 8. Like, bro, he's so inconsistent, bro. <laughs> he's so inconsistent, but he might have value on the train black. I don't know. Um, Dre J. Reddick definitely has value. Definitely has value. Any team that needs a shooter, just call them up. If the 76ers get JJ Reddick, it's over, bro. It's over. I'm already picking the 76ers to go all the way. Bro, the way my boy uh, Joel and B looking, and if Ben Simmons keep playing aggressive like he's been playing the last few games, bro, I don't see nobody stopping him, bro. I don't. And if you get JJ Reddick, that pick and roll with Joel and B, and JJ Reddick come back, oh my God. Oh my God. JJ Reddick should have a lot of calls right now. They keep talking about trading Lonzo. I, I, bro, I don't want that to happen. I love Lonzo Ball, and I love Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram. Like I said, I'm a Lakers boy. They were on the Lakers. I love them together. Don't break that up. Or get be get both of them out of there, please. Just get both of them out of New Orleans, cause I feel like New Orleans just they so terrible. I can make a whole video about it. You got you you pick Jackson Hayes at number eight and don't play the boy. You don't play him at all, and it's just at that point, why, why would you pick him at number eight? Everybody going into that draft knew he was a project. He has the potential to be amazing because the athleticism is out of this world. But he's a he's a project, bro. He's a project. But nothing, nothing, nothing to like be disrespectful to him. But he just is, bro. He's just a project. But um, yeah, I can I can make a whole video. I think I did make a video how they mess up their whole rebuild. But yeah, they 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 down bad. They down bad. Another player that should be looked at on the trade deadline, Delon Wright. Delon Wright can come off your bench and really do anything: score, assist, just play defense, shoot. He can really do anything. He's a really good player for the Pistons. He's been having a really decent season. Him and Mason Plumlee, but I think they like Mason Plumlee, so I don't think they want to trade him. Um, Ricky Rubio, even though he's having a down season, you just know Ricky Rubio in the playoffs is just a great player. So a team like the Clippers, a team that needs a point guard, a veteran point guard, should go out and get him. And the last one, a team that I think my Lakers should get, Hassan Whiteside. We just need a, we need a paint presence. We need somebody in the paint to like get some shot blocks. We don't we don't have no shot blockers. This is AD, and AD is normally on the perimeter guard people. We really don't have no shot blockers like that. So Hassan Whiteside can go out there and help anybody. Like the Mavericks, he's only making five million. Just trade Dwight Powell. He's cool. Dwight Powell is okay, but I'll trade Dwight Powell and a fucking second round pick for Hassan Whiteside any day. Because the White Powell, I mean not the White Powell, the reason that 
the Mavericks really lost yesterday. And the reason why they lose a lot of games is because they're trying to force Porzingis to play the five. And he just be getting killed by anybody. He was getting killed by Ennis Kanter yesterday. And I love Kristoff. But he's just not a paint. He's not a paint defender. He, he's not really a good defender. He's just a shot blocker. And I feel like Hassan Whiteside, he can do really good in the paint. He had a good season last season. So I don't know why he's riding the bench this season. I don't know why he's signed with Sacramento. I don't know why he didn't have no value going into the all season. He had a really, really good season last year. It kind of went under the radar to me. So any team should go out and get him. But the Mavericks, and I know I said they, nom they name a lot. That's just because I feel like they one piece away. They one piece away from being like, yeah, they, they here. And I feel like Hassan Whiteside, that could be a big piece for them. Just giving up the white power person that fell in the um in the um rotation anyway. That's just that's that's not really nothing, bro. I think they should go get him. But other than that, that's it for this video, man. I want to say thank y'all for watching again. Subscribe, like I said in the beginning of the video. And hopefully we get some news, man. I, I'm kind of running out of topics. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> hopefully we get some news on any sport, to be honest. But other than that, I'll talk to y'all. Uh, what the P.S. This is like a little P.S. I forgot. I forgot two players. Well, I just forgot one. And this is really only one destination he really needs to go to. What the hell? Nikola Vucevic, bro. Get him out of Magic. Get him out of a Magic jersey. And you know where he's going. Straight to Boston. Boston. Danny Ainge. Listen, 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 listen. I'm talking to you right now. You already fucked up. You had Gordon Hayward. You lost him for nothing. Even though it was a trade on the table for Gordon Hayward for Miles Turner. And you wanted another starter player. You wanted TJ Warren and Victor Olin Depot. No. I'm happy they declined that shit. You need to stop being greedy. But right now, you need to be smart right now. Trade Kemba. I've been saying this for so long. They don't really need a point guard. Marcus Smart can do that by himself. They don't really need Kemba. You trade Kemba while his value is still somewhat high and you trade him for Vucevic who's having an all-star season and the way he's playing his value is going to keep going up and you might not be able to pull off that trade you probably gonna have to put somebody behind it like Aaron Naismith oh they probably wouldn't mind actually or uh, Romeo Langford trade Kemba for Vucevic it needs to happen keep, bro y'all need paint presence y'all need a person that can score as a center especially when Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are having their off days because they do have a lot of those. Just go get Nikola Vucevic, bro. Have an all-star season. You need that person. Other than that...